Good evening, peoples, and uh, welcome back to our Ginger Snack. Welcomes you back to our living room for our Bible study series on uh, the first epistle of John. She is being rather chatty right now, so uh, you might be hearing from her as well. So we've been reading through uh, the letter of 1 John, which is at the very back of the Bible. Uh, so, 1 <laughs> John 3 begins, Hear now the word of the Lord. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. I'm making this hard, Ginger, now. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been determined. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. So I've mentioned before that um, one, one thing that uh, bothers me a little bit in translating from Greek to English is that Greek has multiple different words for different kinds of love, whereas English really kind of just has the one. Um, fun fact, I just uh, remembered this afternoon as I was putting on my face that I've got uh, some makeup named after different kinds of Greek love. Uh, so uh, my eyeshadow is uh, agape, which is the kind of, yes, she's wearing meowie, which is the kind of love that we're talking about um, in the Gospels. And uh, my lip color is eros, which is romantic love. So fun fact, na makeup names that appeal to me. Uh, so when I was translating, when I was translating uh, this letter from the Greek, uh, I really wanted to specify uh, the kinds of love that we meant, not just love, but gracious and compassionate love and selfless love, etc. So if my translation seemed a little flowery, that, um, that would be why. And this is a, a translation that I did, uh, oh, got about, I think about 10 years ago this month, actually, come to think of it. It was a while ago. Anyway, uh, so I wrote, Behold the compassionate and ever faithful love that God has given us, in order that we might be known as children of God. But because the world does not know us nor our love, it cannot know God. Beloved, we are now children of God, but it is not yet clear what we may later become. However, if God is made known, we will be like God because we will behold God. He who would sin would also break the law, for sin is lawlessness. So the NRSV, the, the more standard, not translated by me version, continues, Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born of God do not sin, because God's seed abides in them. They cannot sin because they have been born of God. The children of God and the children of the devil are revealed in this way. All who do not do what is right are not from God, nor are those who do not love their brothers and sisters. So, um, the word devil uh, comes from the Greek uh, diabolos, which literally means uh, the one who falsely accuses, or a slanderer, or liar. A uh, slanderer was a bit of a Kind of a chunky word that maybe if I was translating now I wouldn't have used in my translation, but whatever. I didn't. I didn't rewrite it for for this evening. Uh, so it's not um, a title so much as it is a description. It's not a uh, specific single figure. It's a uh, type of um, personality, I guess. You know, personality type of person. Anyway, um, so. I was a little bit hesitant to go strictly from Diabolos to the devil. Uh, yes, it is in Spanish, Diablo. Excellent. Yes. Romance languages. Um, anyway, so I just didn't think it was 
quite fair to go uh, straight to Devil, which does have a lot of um, baggage in what it uh, kind of means. Although, of course, in um, art or in storytelling, it's a lot more uh, dramatic and effective and honestly fun uh, to have a uh, single dramatic archetypal character rather than the sort of person who does this kind of thing. Uh, because the sort of person who does this kind of thing is a lot harder to depict than yeah, this guy with the horns and the um, bad skin, etc. Uh, so, as you know, God was made known to us so that God, who is without sin, might take up our sin. Whosoever endures in God does not sin. Whosoever does sin has neither seen nor known God. A little bit idealistic. We all still sin. Total depravity. Um, uh, so, dear children, I still think little children is a little bit patronizing, but maybe that's just me. Right side up, please. Yes. Um, the one who does what is just is righteous, just as God is righteous. He who sins is one with the slanderous one, for he, whom we call the devil, has sinned from the very beginning. The Son of God was made manifest for the task of destroying the slanderous one. Whosoever has been transformed by God does not sin, because God's seed endures within him, and so he is unable to sin, because he has been transformed by God. In this way, the children of God and the children of the slanderous one are separated. Whosoever is not righteous is not a child of God, and whosoever does not love his brother is not a child of God. Right. You're perfectly capable of jumping back up if you want to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Turn on the electric blanket so that you wouldn't be headbutting the Bible, Ginger Snap. Cats. Uh, for this is the message you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? It's a very good question. There's quite a big difference between talking a big game about uh, loving one another um, and actually doing the thing. Uh, so often, especially in the, the letters of Paul, um, who I did a, several classes on in, in previous years, and who obviously wrote a lot more than uh, John did, uh, he uses faith as a verb. It's not a thing that you believe in, it's a way of life. Uh, so like, faithing, rough translation, um, is the proof of uh, being within God's love. Uh, because if you're like, yeah, God and we're buddies, yep, me and God, super tight, um, but you're kind of a jerk and don't really live out anything in the Bible, then it's kind of um, harder to connect those two things, the belief and the actions. Uh, so I translated, you must not be like Cain, servant of the evil one, who slew his own brother. Servant of the evil one, that's a little melodramatic. Huh, okay. I guess I didn't have a different translation for that little phrase. Uh, for what reason did he spill his brother's blood? Because his deeds were evil, while the deeds of his brother were righteous. Also, I mean, <laughs> siblings, am I right? I mean, usually siblings don't murder each other, but um, that was a joke about sibling rivalries. Uh, do not be surprised, brothers, if the world should hate you. And again, remember that Christianity in this generation isn't exactly legal yet, 
So, um, yeah, the world kind of hates them. They are very actively persecuted. Uh, we know that we have passed out of the realm of death into life because we love and value our brothers. The proof is in the love. He who does not love his brothers dwells in death and darkness. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and as you know, no murderer has eternal life. It always seems like very strong language to me, uh, because hating someone or, or even like very strongly disliking someone isn't literally the same thing as killing them. Um, so it's kind of an extreme uh, comparison. There's a word for that that I'm, I'm blanking on, but it's kind of meant to make you think. Um, you know, if you hate somebody, how much better are you than somebody who murders people? I mean, hopefully a bit, but I mean, I guess there's a slippery slope. And point being, um, it's not really a kind of thing of, well, okay, so maybe I hate like this very large group of people and um, also I tip terribly and I kick puppies as a hobby, but I mean, it's not like I murdered people, so basically I'm fine. Um, no, there is always room for improvement, no matter how nice we are. Um, as much as I love you, I'm sure there are things that you could be doing better and there are certainly things I could be doing better and this one could certainly um, be less destructive. Did I mention that she stole a butternut squash recently? A whole butternut squash. Why? Also, it's like half her size. Um, anyway. Keeps losing my place. Uh, yeah, so, um, hatred and murder are being compared here. They're, um, it's a bit of an extreme comparison, but the, the point is, is to make you think. So we know that God has endless love for us. For us, Christ laid down his life, his soul, and his breath, just as we ought to lay down our own for our brothers. Some people possess more than what is necessary for physical life, having an abundance of food or clothing or space under their roofs. But when they see a brother in need, they close their hearts. How could the noble, giving love of God dwell or delight in such people. So uh, John continues, little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. He's being really, really explicit here. It's, it's not about the words, it's about what you do. Um, I continue, dear children, we should not love merely in thought nor in speech, but rather in deed and in truth. And so by our lives of active love, we know that we are of the truth, and thus we will assure our hearts when we come before God, even though our hearts should condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and knows all, but can forgive all through God's great love. So even though we are all ultimately going to come up short because we are not Jesus. Um, the fact that we are trying to live lives of love and that we are actively loving whenever we can, um, that is a promise within our hearts that our love is rooted in the love of God. Beloved, when our hearts no longer condemn us, we shall have confidence before God. We will know that we did our best. And so we receive whatever we may ask from God, because we keep the commandments and are pleasing in God's sight. I do love that image, being pleasing in the sight of God. Like when uh, God looked out upon all of creation that God had just made and said that it was good, and saw the people and said that they were very good. 
And uh, also, as we recently um, read this month, um, when the voice of God breaks through the heavens and declares that Jesus is God's son, with whom God is well pleased. Not just pleased, well pleased. Uh, so John concludes, and this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he, ab he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. You have seen uh, some uh, billboards online along the lines of, uh, remember that time I told you to love your neighbor? I really meant that, uh, which less sarcastically is um, kind of how John is concluding this letter. Uh, yeah, and this is the commandment. Believe in the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Love each other. Esteem each other. Uh, care for each other and value each other. So here I'm uh, really laying on the meaning of the word love here. Uh, all who keep the commandments endure in God, and God endures within them. We know this by the Spirit who has been given to us. So as I said before, it would be uh, really neat if we knew what kind of letters these churches were writing back to the authors of the epistles that uh, made it in the Bible, because as chunky a book as the Bible is, I mean, this one's very small print and like physically small, but the Bible's a fairly chunky book. But as much as is in here, there's so much that was lost to the historical record. Um, and so in many cases, we know the answers, but not the questions that were being asked. It's kind of like Jeopardy. I'm imagining you chuckling. I really do need to queue up a laugh track somewhere in this streaming software. I should do that, uh, since Ginger Snap certainly doesn't laugh at my jokes. Um, anyway, uh, so I think this is a really uh, lovely letter. Lovely, because it's about love. Um, uh, and, oh, do you think I'm funny? Oh, a meow and a purr. She thinks I'm funny. Good cat. I'm going to give you treats later. Um, it's, so it's very, um, it's a pastoral letter. It's a very kind and almost sermon-like letter. Um, it's very encouraging that, um, even though it can be hard to live in the world, uh, when Christianity is literally illegal, um, or rough things are going on, or it's dangerous to go outside. Some of these things apply today. Um, still, even despite all of that, we know that God loves us, and we know that we are perfectly capable of loving each other, um, even though we don't always want to. But we can love each other, and when we do, that shows the world that God loves us, and that um, shares the love of God with the world. Um, uh, so, peoples, good night. I hope that you feel loved this week. I hope that you find ways to share love with the world, and I hope you remember that God loves you deeply and infinitely and passionately.